Well, it is another opportunity to worship online with the community of faith of Alamance Lutheran Church. Hi, I'm Pastor Ron Philobom. Elijah finds the presence of God not in earthquake, earthquake, wind, or fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. When the disciples face a great storm on the sea, they cry out with fear. And Jesus says, hey guys, relax. It's me. Do not be afraid. See, amid the storms of life, we gather to seek the calm presence of Christ that soothes our fears in comforting words of scripture and in the refreshing bread and cup of communion God grants us peace and sends us out into the world to be a sign of God's presence to others so come along with us as we learn and we grow together Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. For well, God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy because you are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. My Lord and God, you direct my life by your grace and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Help me to listen and learn and grow in service to you. Inspire me through the scriptures in 1 Kings and Psalms and Romans and Matthew that we study today, so that I will give and be grateful for what you have given me to use. Grant that I may believe in you, call upon you, and learn from your holy word and serve you in partnership with my community gathered around me. When worry overwhelms me, please help me to find strength in my faith, knowing that you abide with me through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and he spent the night there. The word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And God said, go out, stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong, that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. 
Then the Lord said to him, Go, and return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram, and you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Meholah as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of God. We are listening, Lord. Our psalm for the day is the 85th psalm. We'll begin with the 8th verse. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second reading is from the 10th chapter of Romans. St. Paul writes, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, for one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on the one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of God. We are listening for it. Our gospel is from the 14th chapter of Matthew, and it begins with the 22nd verse. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself just to pray. When evening came, he was there all alone. But by this time, the boat that the disciples were in was battered by the waves and was far from land. For the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking across toward them on the sea but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. 
But immediately Jesus spoke to him and said, Hey, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and he started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the wind and the waves, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and he caught him, saying to him, Oh, Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Holy wisdom, holy word, Lord, speak to me. Well, let's take some time to reflect on God's word and how we might learn and grow together. Lord, we humbly come before you with gratitude to be assembled here in your house. Pray that you will bless the words that I speak from this humble meditation of my heart as we listen and grow together. Amen. Well, when the disciples were in the boat and the waves were getting big, I did not think they were singing the song from that, that rhythm and blues tune, Rock the boat, don't tip the boat over. They were frankly afraid for their lives. Have you ever been afraid for your life? Maybe fear of losing your life? Well, I have too. But there are several points that I think you may miss in this all too familiar story. First is, I want you to notice that Jesus did not calm the storm first. He walked into it. How many times have has the storms in your life become calm before Jesus walks in? It is the storms that Jesus comes to us each time. When Peter noticed Jesus, it seems odd that he needed a confirmation of who Jesus was. In one sense, it sounds like he tested Jesus, like, hey man, if it's really you, command me to come to you on the water. I suppose that we're all guilty of testing God by saying, hey God, if you are really, really there, do this or do that. The history of human, human uncertainty of the power of God goes way, way back. You might recall in the sixth chapter of Judges where Gideon was praying to God saying, please, please don't be angry with me, but if you really want me to do this, make the fleece dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. It is no different with the disciples. So Jesus commands Peter to come and step out of the boat and is doing just fine until he realizes the storm. See, I would have thought that when his doubt overcame him, that he would drop like a rock in the water. But scripture, scripture says that he began to sink. Scripture does not describe uh, at the speed that he sank as though he was on the, a down escalator of a department store, just that he began to sink. Much like when our doubt begins to overwhelm us, we begin to sink into despair. See, Peter knows, he knows enough to call out to Jesus and says, save me. It was not only Peter that was saved from drowning that day, but every one of those disciples. How often do we sink into the depths of our despair and yet we forget to call out to Jesus, save me. It's 
during my tech study for this week, a colleague mentioned that if she ever gets a chance to name a new church, she would suggest the Lutheran Church of the Sinking Peter. <laughs> we all laughed. But the irony is that it seems to be in our nature to allow our faith to sink because the waves around us appear to be bigger than the God we worship and profess our faith in. Will we remember this story when we are sinking? How many times do we avoid the scary storms instead of leaning on Christ to walk with us through the stormy gale? There's a song that we all have sung as children and I think it's appropriate. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, oh yes, my Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. That small little hymn gives us great comfort when, our, when we are sinking into despair. There's something I think we can all remember, and it, it comes from Eugene Peterson's The Message Translation. And it gives us a glimpse into what happens when we do sink and we scramble to survive. In Peterson's translation, it simply says, and then they climbed into the boat together. The God of all comes to us in our storm and then climbs into the boat together with us. So how does that make you feel? When you hear that, how will someone else's life that you meet in a parking lot or at the grocery store, at the restaurant, or a friend, a family member, a neighbor, how will their life be changed when you share with them, hey, whatever you're going through this week, Jesus will climb back into the boat with you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for inspiring us this morning to boldly answer your call to listen and learn and grow in your word. Help us to get our feet wet by stepping out into uncharted waters of ministry so that others will find hope in you. Amen. Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal away home. I ain't gonna learn to stay. Thank you.
Let us join together in confessing publicly what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in that God receives our joys and concerns. Let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need and all of creation. God of grace and faith, your faithfulness is never ending and your righteousness becomes ours through Jesus Christ. Send the church to proclaim the gospel both near and far in church buildings and on street corners in person and through digital means. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of grace and hope, we pray for the ministry of Via de Cristo. May others experience the breath of your grace in their lives during a weekend. We pray that those attending bring back a renewed passion for serving you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of care and compassion, you bring assurance when we are afraid. Bring calm to any who are anxious or fearful. Bless the work of therapists, nurses, and other health care providers. Comfort all who grieve and soothe any who are sick, especially Shane, Carolyn, Hugh, Malachi, Billy, Martha, Blake, Jill, Graham, Mari, Sonia, the family of Shanna, Dewey, Christy, Ray and Gwen, Cheryl, Jerry, Sydney, Terry, Butch, Tommy, Karen, Eric, Steve, Betty, Lynn, Annie, Aaron, Bernie and Ann, Brian, Braden, Bob, Carl and June, Dean, Easton, Ivan, Haley, Jeffrey, Jerry, Joan, Cadence, Carissa, Kenneth, Lynn and Tara, Michelle, Philip and Stanley, and Sydney. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of wonder, you accompany us in both joys and sorrows. 
We pray for children and teachers preparing for the new school year. Make your presence known in our work and play, in lively conversation and in quiet rest. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, speak to us as we build new experiences for our kids and families to learn and grow in faith in you. We lift up the following. Aaron, Amelia, Angus, Austin, Carly, Clayton, Cora Ann, Preston, Eleanor, Eli, Ella, Ellie, Emma, Hunter, JJ, James, Jarrett, John, Josie Mae, Kaya, Katie Rose, Leanne, Layton, Luke, Marilyn, Max, Megan, Molly, Noah, Owen, Paige, Sam, Sarah, Sarah Jo, Sophie, Tabitha, Tustin. God in your mercy hear our prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to come to you at all times, to have conversation with you as we seek to follow you with sincerity. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, including those names that we speak out loud or silently within our own hearts. We lift these prayers and our commitment to serving you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. May the Lord watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Now go in peace and be inspired by the Holy Spirit to be sent into your communities to serve others with compassion and generosity. Well, thank you for joining us for another online worship opportunity from the Community of Faith of Alamance Lutheran Church, where all are welcome to come, however you are, and everyone will know your name. I'm Pastor Ron. We will see you again next week to learn and grow together.